Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Leading scientists are warning that South Africa has entered a water crisis and that urgent actions need to be taken to improve the outlook for both water quality and quantity. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the issue. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. What are South Africa's water scientists saying about the situation and why do they deem it a crisis? Well, the scientists are uh, at the CSIR, um, and they're based in the Western Cape and in Pretoria. And uh, they're really looking at specifically water issues, looking at both whether we have adequate water supplies in terms of quantity, as well as what the quality of the water in South Africa is at the moment. And the warning signs that they, they, uh, they or the signals they're putting out is that we, while we have adequate quantity of water in South Africa, so there's not a, a theoretical shortage, already in a number of areas, we're finding that the quality is not of a sufficient nature that it can be used for humans, animals, industry, um, as well as for the ecological, ec uh, ecological base. So therefore, because of that, we actually have a quantity problem uh, in certain areas, and therefore they deem that as a, a water crisis. And I think the warning is that unless we start uh, dealing with that issue of quality quite seriously, and it's a complex matter because it's not like the electricity situation where you have an, um, a national utility in the form of Eskom. It's a very fragmented uh, system that has many role players. You have the Department of Water and, uh, Water and Sanitation, you have municipalities involved, you have other um, utility companies involved. And uh, it's, it's, you know, there are a lot of moving parts. So it's going to take a lot of coordination. And I think the other warning is it's not so much a policy and legislative matter. This uh, current crisis really comes down to the way we're managing our water resources and the implementation of policy, the enforcement, the monitoring, and ensuring that the water is properly treated. Now there's also a warning that climate change and population and economic growth are ex or will exacerbate the situation going forward. There's even a warning from the CSR scientists that by 2025 there could be a, 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 a real water deficit. Now in a low growth scenario of about 2% economic growth a year, they're saying we could have a, around a 2% deficit by then. If we have a high economic growth of closer to 4%, the deficit could be as high as 13%. And they're looking at this and saying, well, and then we also have the, the climate change issues that are starting to bite in certain parts of the country. And the modeling for the, the next century suggests that we're going to have a, an increase, especially on the western side and in, inland, in temperatures of over five degrees. And that means that evaporation rates are going to, to increase. Already South Africa has very high evaporation rates, which affects a lot of our dams. And it also affects, the, uh, it leads to very uh, little of the water that actually comes down in the form of rain, rainfall actually entering the river systems. So the evaporation, if it increases, is going to affect the quantity um, of, uh, of water supply. And then if you have the quality problem compounding it, which we're already seeing now, there's, a re there's a, about half of South Africa's wastewater treatment works at the moment. There's over 800 of them are said to either be in a poor condition or into in a critical state. So if you have that, and then you add to the issues of around um, the poor treatment of acid mine drainage, and uh, the fact that there's not a lot of um, new fresh water entering the system in the form of rainfall runoff um, because it's being evaporated, you're going to have a, an even deeper crisis. Now, what are the remedies that are being proposed and are there any lessons that we can draw from the current power crisis? Well, the first lesson is that we have to realize that we are a water scarce country. We're the 30th driest country in the world. And, uh, the, the, we have to build our, all our remedies around that reality and the fact that it's possibly going to get worse with climate change. So that's, that's a reality that we have to deal with and that's the context that we have to work with. In. But there are, the CSIR suggests that we're spoiled for choice in terms of the amount of remedies. One, there are a lot of quick ones, getting the, potentially getting the water treatment plants working better, having more infrastructure in place because there has been an underinvestment in water treatment facilities. And uh, you know th those can be quite; uh, they can have quite a major impact, quite quickly, if we can uh, make some progress there. And we do have the green drop status reports, which I think is a, a positive development in trying to get those 
plants in a better position. And, but there it's all about diligence and management. And I think that's where South Africans tend to, uh, to always fall down. We have good plans and good ideas and good policy and good legislation. But when it comes to actually diligently managing the plants and maintaining them, as we've seen with the electricity sector, that's where we, we really do fall, uh, fail ourselves. The other issue is to deal with things like municipal leaks. So we, do have, we don't theoretically have a quantity problem, but when you're having so many pipes leaking in municipalities, uh, it becomes a, a major a crisis in certain areas, uh, coupled especially with the water treatment problems. So dealing with those municipal leaks can be a quick one and a fairly low cost uh, uh, intervention. We also have to look at other uh, boosting quantity. And some of those issues could come down to more inter-basin transfers. Those are hugely expensive. We know that we're pushing ahead with another one in the form of Lesotho Highlands Phase 2, and that, that's already, the, the trigger's been pulled on that, and that's important. But we're going to have to possibly look at other areas to boost quantity, and that can come in the form of desalination, potentially desalination plants at the coast, and even potentially inland for desalination. And uh, there's, uh, you know, we, we also could look at our groundwater supplies, but there is a concern there that groundwater is also being contaminated at the moment. So we, there, there, there are concerns about the state of groundwater, but South Africa does have good groundwater resources. And in fact, one of the great things about using groundwater is that the evaporation impact is much lower. Then there's the whole issue of water efficiency, both in the urban areas, but I think crucially within the agricultural sector, which is allocated over 60%, I think 62% of all water is allocated to agriculture. So the issue is about getting more crop per drop. So CSRR is working on a number of initiatives down in the Western Cape and other parts of the country in trying to ensure that we match uh, the tree or the orchard's demand, for instance, in a fruit uh, environment, to uh, the tree's actual needs. Uh, so we match the water supply with the tree's actual need. The moment the irrigation schedules just go right throughout the season, uh, without necessarily looking at what the tree actually is needing to consume. So there's a much more scientific approach being applied here, and that, that's going to be a very important remedy as well, much more water efficiency. So the, the, the we need to preserve our resources. We need to manage it far better. But crucially, I think the lesson from the power crisis is, is that we have, to, we have to name this thing early and recognize it early. Rather than putting our heads in the sand, we need to you know, as South Africans say, look, we are a water scarce country. We've got a quality problem. This is a, already, a bit, a, already a crisis. It's not a major crisis for the whole country on average. In certain areas, it's a definitely an acute crisis. And I think we need to go ahead uh, without an ostrich approach, but uh, in dig diligently implementing policy, in monitoring our resources, and most particularly important in managing and maintaining our infrastructure. Thanks, Terence. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.